Hello, YouTube, and this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and we are back with this week in EDM, except it is this month in EDM because I have missed an entire month of these videos. We are going through four weeks of stuff that came out this week in EDM. We're going to jumble them all together, to be honest, uh, but if you need to figure out what songs you actually want to listen to or my opinions on stuff or stuff that you may have just, like wanted to go check out, all of it is in the description below with timestamps, so go do that. Um, we are gonna go in full, like sort of order from bad, meh, good to stand out, no trash this week. Um, but and we're gonna go alphabetical order within its own category, just for the sake of everything. So it's not in order of release; it's in order of, sort of by alphabetical. So hopefully that makes sense. We've got a lot of stuff to cover. There are 77 songs that I'm covering here in this video, uh, so we're gonna try to speed through them as fast as I can. Uh, as, as fast as I can. So let's let's get going. Number one, the bad category. Songs I thought were bad. Surprisingly, in four weeks, I only thought there were four bad songs. And uh, we're starting off with Fool For You, this one that came out this week by Glantis and Jake featuring Anissa. Uh, not very beat heavy, but the with less than stellar vocals doesn't really land, it doesn't really lend itself too nicely to the track. So that's that. Up next, we've got Sorry by Spag Hetty. Uh, the song sounds like it's trolling to me. It's got a bit of a circus beat with a horrendous lead line. I truly don't understand what is going on here. I uh, Apparently, this is an apology song for an album that wasn't released last year, but I don't know. This just feels weird to me. Then we've got The Sub by Mike Cervello and Kirby. Um, absolute muddiest of bass lines that you'll hear all year. Uh, while it's uh, very intentionally produced that way, it still doesn't make it sound good for me personally. Um, even in a club setting, I think this is kind of boring. Then we've got Worship You by Barton Jensen and Karen Harding. Uh, totally a stolen melody melody here from uh, a craze's Do It To uh, Do It. To it. It's just like slightly slowed down and made secondary in the mix and it's, it's bad. I'm surprised this actually escaped trash, but uh, but that's it for, for bad. And we're moving into the meh category again in meh, all organized from alphabetical order by the song title. So we are heading into Aftertaste by Zed's Dead and Hunter featuring Aiden. Uh, dark techno style track with a flair for the more cinematic. And that's how quick we're gonna go through stuff. Then we've got All of a Sudden by The Chemical Brothers. Uh, nostalgic, purely like electronic track that uh, is kind of taking us back to an earlier days of house. Sounds great, but I just wish it sort of went somewhere. I've never been a huge Chemical Brothers fan, so uh, sorry about that. But then we've got Alone With You by uh, Tungavog. I'm not sure how to say that exactly. And Retrovision, uh, big room track with all of the kind of electro sounds of Retrovision. Uh, easily digestible track with very little storytelling. It's It's kind of there. Then we've got BTW, or by the way, uh, or The Whistle by Crank Dat. The Slaughterhouse EP is out, and I did have a chance to review it, and I thought it was sort of okay, all things considered. Um, a little bit more of an industrial-sounding lecture house from this song in particular, and I guess the whole EP as well. But uh, the, the whistle just felt a little out of place for me. It doesn't quite sound like it should really be in the song. Like, this specific whistle sound feels like it shouldn't be there. I don't really get it, but... Yeah, moving along. Uh, we've got BDSM, uh, the Ballistic Death Squad Matriarchy by Varian. Um, IDM track with heavy bass lines and a creepy atmosphere. Really fascinating sound design, though. Then we've got Be With You by Retrovision, a nostalgia-ridden bass house track. It's fun and jumpy, but that's about it. Then we've got Blue in the Face by Rez, Shaden, and Fucking Sad. Uh, dark and creepy vocals with matching sound design. This one is ripe for the kind of Rez stands out there. Then we've got Call My Name by Reaper, standard Reaper DNB with heavy saws and a bouncy bass line. I feel like Reaper's getting a little bit too uh, too safe, I would say. Then we've got, uh, sadly, it's in meh, but Dominate, the VIP uh, by Space Laces. It's hard hitting main stage style track that's relatively linear for Space Laces, but I didn't really find it overall too appealing, sadly, so. Then we've got Dopamine Junkie by Vice Tone and Ben Samama. Uh, definitely not their best, but much better than we had in the last year. Um, it's a tad bland, yes, but it's not egregiously that bad. Then we've got Take Two by Effin, a more destructive dubstep style from Effin, which he's done a lot of. Uh, but I uh, love the vocal sample used here, and I thought the first drop was much stronger than the second. Then we've got Eternals by Troy Boy and Stooky Sound. The Say Less EP is out, and I really did not enjoy it. I thought it was, the whole thing was very basic, and this this beat in particular is a very just basic trap beat. Uh, it's got the aesthetic of an Apache track, just uh, lacking the grandeur of such. Then we've got Euphoria by Pegboard Nerds and Stonebank. Uh, sadly, I've been really underwhelmed with these collaborations as of late between these two. Uh, this is sort of just your like brooding hard style that really isn't all that different from other songs of the same genre. 
And we've got Feel, uh, Fell in Love by Marshmallow and Brent Faza. Uh, this is a chilled out Marshmallow track that is more vocal forward. It's short and sweet though. Um, no real complaints other than it's just really vanilla. Then we've got Fight It by Wave Dash. For Wave Dash, it is relatively simplistic. It's a more commercial style track while still staying true to the Wave Dash sound. But uh, yeah, in the end, I just thought it was uh, okay. And we've got Free Again by Cloud Nun and Taylor Renee. This is the third single from an upcoming LP. I felt that Taylor's vocals were a little flat uh, and paired with a slightly more energetic Cloud Nun electronica beat. Um, it's just not kind of my favorite. I felt like this was trying to be too dramatic and just kind of lacked. We've got Haunt You by Skylar, a jittery hybrid trap track with a fairly repetitive vocal chant. Um, nothing too special in my eyes. We've got Hey There by Milk and Affixa, a very fruity and tropical track with a bad, kind of back end of pure hardcore. Uh, definitely a lot of variety within the relatively quick track, but felt like you're getting, I don't know, it felt like it had a lot of mixed signals more than anything. Um, that being said, it does keep its tonal cohesion, I think, throughout, but the 180 from the quiet future bass to the hardcore is a, a bit jarring for me. Then we've got Leviathan by Trivecta and Caster. A uh, new Ophelia collab is out now, and uh, many styles and sounds intertwine throughout this track, but uh, nothing that I found to be too that interesting for me in particular. So, Then we've got Love is a Highway by Nurko featuring Naraya. This is sort of your derivative mellow dub that has spurts of orig originality all throughout, but um, it just doesn't get all the way there. Uh, vocals I thought were also a little, little boring. And then we've got Never Let You Down by Buz, Miles Away, and Ryzen, I want to say, Ryzen. Um, we got some pretty standard modern uh, slap house here with a punchy rhythm that will get its radio plays, but I don't think it's overall that fantastic of track. Then we've got Night by Vess Green, uh, more speed house on Monster Cat, but this time it's got a splash of Outrun, and that's that. Then we've got Oceans by Griffin and Kid Joy. This is a very basic commercial house track with your standard love is everywhere sentiment style track. So uh, just, just meh. Then we've got Pumpany by Kaiwachi and Company. Uh, I kind of like the silliness of this track. It's the kind of very like, bro, 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 you want to pump like kind of thing. But uh, it very isn't clearly taking itself too seriously. Um, definitely a good one for uh, hitting the gym uh, in a sort of funny, not taking yourself too seriously kind of manner. But yeah. Uh, then we got Sad in the Summer by Diplo featuring Lily Rose. Uh, Diplo presents Thomas Wesley Chapter 2, Swamp Savant. The album is out now. And uh, honestly, I thought this track in particular could have been a lot worse, but ultimately was just uh, very, very vanilla, like the Marshmallow track. Uh, then we got Selfish Soul, the Odessa remix, originally by Sudan Archives. Um, but yeah, this is an odd remix for Odessa. I don't quite hear a lot of their sound design in it. I thought the mixing was a little bit more muddy for what I'm used to from Odessa. Then we've got SpongeBob by Gammer. Uh, the SpongeBob theme is literally just put to a rave beat. Um, this is going to go absolutely hard on festivals. That's it. Then we've got Steal That Shine by Virus Syndicate, uh, Skybreak, and Prima. The Sick World EP by Virus Syndicate is out, and I thought this was the best track of the EP by far. Um, Skybreak's uh, Shine, though, I think was stolen by Virus Syndicate's uh, gimmicky vocals. Then we've got Synergy by Timmy Trumpet and Dubs. Uh, the most basic big room house you're going to get today, um, but, uh, you know, it's very safe sounding with no real intriguing qualities, but the mixing is actually pretty solid, I thought. Um, then we've got The Door by Cloud Nun and Nina Sung. The standard Cloud Nun formula is starting to lose a little bit of its luster for me. Uh, it's not really a bad track, but I feel like I've heard it, I don't know, a bunch of times now. I'm kind of just a little, um, not, not feeling Cloud Nun in these days, personally. So that's a little sad, but, uh, I'm excited for the, uh, the LP coming out. We've got Tool of Delirium by Murata, a absolutely massive wall of sound that leads right into some of the choppiest rhythm you'll hear this year. Not so much my flavor, but uh, if you like that kind of style, I think you'll enjoy this one quite a bit. Then the final one in May, we've got When We Come Alive by Armin Van Buren and Vinny Vicky featuring album. Uh, big room side trance here, just kind of riding the edge of interesting and boring uh, in my eyes. So. Moving into the good category, we've got almost 40 songs in good from the last two weeks. I was starting with Alive by Kiro and Scum. Actually, this one is one of my favorite tracks in this category, I would say, this week or this month. Um, but yeah, heart-pounding track with cyberpunk vibes written all over it. A little short, but the drops do feel long and expansive despite its runtime. It's the best Kiro and Scum I think I've heard in a long time. 
We've got All I Wanted by Bensley and Skyel, or featuring Skyel. Uh, cool to see Bensley play around with some more of a melodic synth lead line rather than just being the kind of uh, hard and brooding d- drum and bass. But uh, the whole song is just uh, brighter than the history of the past for Bensley, and I like that. They've got All We Need, the VIP, originally by, or it is by Odessa, featuring Shy Girls. Uh, the last, Goodbye Deluxe, is out now, and this was from a very earlier album, uh, but this is a VIP from that track. Uh, but very different take on the original, which I think was smart, a lot more dark and more grand, I would say. I got the kind of glitchiness in there that isn't very commonplace for Odessa discography, and I, I like that. Then we've got Am I Right by Hello World, a uh, third single from an upcoming project of sorts, and this is the deepest yet, a little more personal, yet still keeps true to its glitchy Hello World sound that we know and love. Then we've got Be Somebody by Auto Nose featuring Alex Eris, a uh, solid progressive house with good progression, just a tad on the boring side, but uh, I did enjoy it. Then we've got Blinding by Denmo and Wolfie Lights. Really liked Wolfie Lights' vocals on this a lot, actually. And Denmo's D&B production uh, is catchy and reminds me a lot of uh, Rundamental's uh, Home LP from years and years ago, which I really, really liked. So uh, I enjoyed that song. Then we've got Buried At by Guy Arthur. This is actually my favorite from all of these singles from Chompo Season 1 up to this point. The uh, the full compilation is coming out soon. But uh, yeah, this well, the song in particular hits hard and sort of just, just keeps going. And I, I really like that about it. I've got Chalk 1.3.3, the 2017 Export Wave by Flume featuring Jimmy Stack. Uh, the Arrived Anxious Left Board mixtape randomly dropped um, recently, and um, this sounds so much like his old self-titled Flume album debut record. Uh, this is sounds like a lot like OG wonky sound, and I enjoy that a lot. Uh, another song I really enjoyed, uh, this was Charmer by Godlands, uh, one of the best trap tracks I have heard this year so far. Uh, the drop is nasty as hell, the atmosphere of the track is sinister, I am a huge fan. Uh, this is one of the top ones, particularly for me this week, or this month I should say. Uh, then we've got Cloud Nine High by Roman Silver and Varwell, a uh, laid back kind of quaint little track I would say. Um, a cruising beat with smooth production, I enjoyed it. Then we got Don't Look Down, the Camouflage remix, originally by San Holo, featuring Lizzie Land. Uh, grooving remix, uh, it's got a club beat on top of a already track that I enjoyed, and um, this is a bit more of a relaxed tone, though, while still being in that club kind of uh, realm, so I enjoyed this one. Then we got Down For Anything by Daniel Levi, the return to NCS from Daniel Levi. Uh, this is another grooving, very lighthearted track with a um, little guitar riff section in the middle that I liked uh, a lot and added a lot to the track, so... Then we've got Eclipse by Chill, uh, more Speedhouse, and this might actually be my favorite of Chill's discography yet, uh, that I've at least ever listened to. Uh, the vocals are energetic, the production is fast and jumpy as one would expect with Speedhouse, and it's just a great track overall. Then we've got Eclipse by Black Tiger Sex Machine and Dion Timmer featuring Run. Uh, this is an explosive track with screechy rhythm, first drop, and a more kind of sawed out back half. Uh, but the second half, I would say, is far stronger than the first, but that just may, may, may be my preference for not loving rhythm as much. But I do think it saves the whole track, that uh, that second drop, second half. So. Then we've got Enough by Fred again and Brian Eno. Uh, the collaboration LP is out between these two now, uh, Fred again and Brian Eno. The... Uh, uh, Secret Life, I believe it's called. Uh, this is a more somber, reflective, kind of piano and pad-driven track, and it's uh, it's quite beautiful. Then, surprisingly in good, we've got Esta Vida by Marshmello and Faruko. Uh, this is, yes, radio bait through and through. That being said, it's a pretty calm track that's not at all that cheesy, which is not what I expected, and uh, actually a pretty good track. Even though it's not my style, I think this is Marshmello's best in quite some time. Then we've got Ethereal by Sharks, uh, an incredible new single here. It's got all the classic shark sound design and wet synths, uh, but it's a little bit more free-flowing and opting out of uh, any real hard-hitting drops as well. So uh, I liked a little bit of a change-up for Sharks here. Then we've got Farang by Amnes. The Nur EP is out now, and uh, this is a new up-and-coming producer uh, with this EP out on Bitbird, and I'm loving his unique production style, and so I would encourage you to go listen to uh, this dude, Amnes. I think it's a dude, actually. I didn't even look it up. I'm assuming it's a guy, but I could be very wrong. Um, up next, we've got Fever by Lewis uh, Thompson and Punctual. Uh, this is the instinct that I like a lot. The Monster Instinct I like a lot. Um, a mix of kind of funk and nostalgia. And yes, it's quick, but it's such an earworm. So then we've got Flow by Have. Uh, this is a clean track uh, put together drum and bass with a lot of pace to it. Um, great mixing. It's kind of got their classic deeper Have sounds. So 
I uh, enjoyed that one. Then we got Fool by Akali and Bloom. Uh, big brass sounding drop on top of a trap beat here. It's a remnants of a kind of older pseudo future bass era of sound, I would say. Uh, reminds me a lot of uh, like mid 2015s. And then we got Gasoline by Apache and Raga. Not quite as grand or orchestral as Apache has normally been, uh, but still a dark tone and a cinematic sound design that I thoroughly enjoyed. Then we've got Happy by Mami Edifu. I still don't know how to say that yet, but uh, Tokyo's big get for Champo season one, and this really fits the soundscape of Champo as a label, and I like that back half a lot. Uh, then there's All Be There by Lisa and Zombic. Uh, funky electropop that's not true, too dramatic, but uh, really pleasing. Again, short for instinct, though. Then we've got I'll Be Waiting by Ace Aura, Nazar, and Danny King. A modern melodic bass track here with a couple of twists, particularly the subdued kind of hardcore-esque middle drop. Um, the mixing felt a little flat to me, but I enjoyed the synthlix and uh, those drops quite a bit, actually. Then we've got Just Like You by Conroe featuring Boslin. Uh, Conroe's taking a back seat on the vocals here, kind of letting Boslin go off on the uh, verses here, but um, really solid electropop and super catchy. Then we've got Kill to Feel uh, by Ganja White Knight and Infected Mushroom. The Unity LP by Ganja White Knight is out now. Uh, this is a very growl-heavy dubstep song in particular, this track. Um, it's exploratory with multiple movements, ending with a kind of dubstep side transfusion in its finale. Then we've got Live Without Love, Shaus and David Guetta landing in good. Uh, this is actually a really solid modern house track. Um, it's uplifting with an ethereal chorus, and I think it's David Guetta's best in a long time, and I think that's mainly due to Shouse here, but that's besides the point. And then we've got Reptiles by Slumberjack, a wavy trap track here with a very flat synth lead, but it's uh, still quite interesting, I think, in the end. They've got Say It To Me by Otto Nose. I'm loving the mixing on this single in particular. This is a kind of more dance floor house style track with uh, great accompanying vocals. It feels like a classic of the forgotten past. Then we've got Shattering by Sharks. Uh, the first half is a bit of a kind of hard hitting one. And then the middle section is more delicate. And the third is a finale and mix of both, I would say. Uh, lots of distortion on the synth line here. And uh, I enjoyed this. Then we've got Skin by Tasaki and Fabian Mazur, a more subdued trap track that's uh, right up the Bitbird Alley in terms of its sound design and style. And then we've got Someone by Tokyo Machine and Nitro Fun, really a perfect blend of their two sounds here with kind of old school Electro House and the modern Complexdro that uh, both of these artists bring um, to this track. Then we've got Static by uh, Antagonizer, uh, who is actually the culmination of Away and Crywolf. Um, their new project is out, and this is, I believe, the first single of an upcoming project. Um, but yeah, it's very creepy in its tone, and it just punches over and over and over again relentlessly hard, and I really like this one. Then we've got Tactics by Eptic, featuring Joey Valence and Bray. Um, yeah, punchy percussion here and screechy synths are the name of the game, and it just blends together so seamlessly. I really like Eptic style, so. Then we've got Tension by Fool and Jonathan. Uh, Halloween-esque outrun style beat here, uh, minimalistic by design, uh, but with a really uh, with a strong emphasis on those kind of minor chords and punchy hits. Then we've got Three Drums by Fortet. This is a sort of almost too long-winded, multi-movement, serene track. Um, it's another one that's quite beautiful. Uh, I would listen to this in nature. Go out and listen to this in nature is the best way to put it. And another surprising one in the good category, we've got Medusa featuring Poppy Bascombe with Upside Down. This is quite possibly the best Medusa track to date. Uh, commanding synth line is sounding great. Uh, the vocals are simple yet effective, and it feels like a callback to a simpler time of pop EDM. We're almost at the end. We've got You Were Right by Elenium and Wooly and Grabbits. The Elenium LP self-titled is out now. Uh, Grabbits' vocals, in particular on this track, I thought were incredible. By far my favorite track of this album, and that's why I wanted to do this one, not the Avril Lavigne one, because I thought the Avril Lavigne one was not great. Uh, but this song is absolutely solid. So, yeah. And then we've got Youth by Ghost in Real Life and Slippy. Uh, I feel like drumstep is very uncommon in its genre nowadays. That's, there's not a ton of it. And this kind of felt like a little bit more refreshing here in that style again. Uh, Ghost in Real Life's vocals are simple and work. Uh, and it is just, yeah, it worked beautifully with the drop in particular. So uh, very anthemic track, I would say. And our only one standout of the month, I would personally say standout, is Which Way by G. Jones. Uh, some of the most intricate, 
uh, subtle and polished bit of production I've heard this year by far. Uh, for G. Jones' standards, it's fairly minimalistic, but it is yet so meaty, and I was a huge fan, so... Uh, wow, if you made it through this entire video, thumbs up to you. That is fantastic. Um, that has been this month in EDM. Uh, as always, the songs are in the uh, Spotify playlist below, and those are actually sort of sorted by uh, by weeks, but if you want to listen to the songs there, Spotify link in the comment section below. Other than that, I am Dakota from Botet Media, and I will see you guys in another video.